I would tell you that it is going to be 10, 20, 50 times harder than anything you've ever done. Being an entrepreneur is the most stressful and difficult thing I've ever had to do uh, beyond anything even in, through military service. Prepare yourself because it's, it's a lot of work and it's going to consume you. Ben Charma is the founder, chairman and CEO of Arevco. Arevco is the world's most innovative residential commercial real estate brokerage, a pioneer of securitized commercial real estate development and the first official real estate tech partner of the MIT Center for Real Estate, the most respected thought leader in real estate. Now, here's your host for the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy V. Terry. So we have here Ben Sharma uh, from Orefco. Did I say that right? That's right. Excellent. Where did you come up with that name? Actually, Orefco stands for Olympus Real Estate Ventures Company. Okay. So it's an acronym. It is an acronym. So yeah. what do you tell us what that, what that means? So um, Orefco is uh, the pioneer of securitized commercial real estate development. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also the founder of the world's first uh, commercial real estate securities exchange, and we're the first uh, official real estate tech partner of the MIT Center for Real Estate. So what does all that mean? Basically what that means is when we do a commercial real estate development, we convert that development into what we call real securities, and then we sell those real, real securities, and that's how we finance the project, and then we list those real securities on our Refco Real Securities Exchange. And so uh, investors can invest in our projects through the exchange. Excellent. Now, based on our conversation earlier today, you told me that you've been in the Navy, you've done some marketing. How did you go from doing all that before and now doing this? <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty, pretty good shift right there. Yeah. Um, so uh, I started my career uh, in the military and um, I was, as mentioned, in the Navy. Uh, but I actually did um, three tours, uh, twice in uh, Iraq and one in Afghanistan. Wow. And uh, my first tour was with the Navy, and then the second tour was with the Marine Corps, and third was an Army Air Force Joint uh, tour. And you and did all that for about a, a period of about 10 years? About 10 years, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and then I got out, so I, um, went to business school, uh, and then after business school, I ended up uh, working for several different companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last company, I was an executive at CBRE, which is the world's largest uh, commercial real estate company. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized um, there is a, an opportunity within commercial real estate uh -huh. uh, to do something very disruptive uh, and revolutionary. So I left and started a Revco. Okay. And what was that opportunity that you saw? Um, so this, uh, what, what we're doing right now, the commercial, the securitized commercial real estate development. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you usually do real estate development, the way you do it is you go to institutional investors, you raise the capital, right. then you get the debt and you do the project. Well, that shuts out 99% of the market because mm -hmm. unless you're a very, very wealthy investor or you're an institution, you're not able to invest in specific projects. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to find a way on why can't we securitize a building mm -hmm. so that anybody can invest in it because you could just buy securities uh, or shares of stock whatever it is into the building and then if we do that we can actually make one of the world's most illiquid assets which is real estate we can make it as liquid as stock mm -hmm. and the other bonus is when you're ready to sell your investment your shares of investment instead of paying a broker six percent for a transaction fee right. we don't charge anything to sell your real securities, it's absolutely free. Why wouldn't you charge? I mean, that is the whole profit and you know, the of the whole business of real estate. So why wouldn't you charge? So we don't charge the seller to sell, we sell we charge the buyers to buy. Okay. And it's a very, very small uh, percentage of the actual uh, transaction when okay. they're actually making the purchase. Okay. And so when we take a building and we IPO that building, there's an IPO fee. So we may we make our money through the IPO process, mm -hmm. but then it's just a fraction charge anytime somebody buys it. But as a seller, as an investor and, and, and when you're ready to sell it's liquid and mm -hmm. it's commission free. Wow. You were telling me that you actually made that decision uh, to become an entrepreneur back in 2014. That's right. Correct. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about that decision, that trigger point. What was it? I just kept working, right? Uh, and uh, in different companies. And then when this idea at my, you know, my last job, I started getting a lot of exposure into commercial real estate. And I'm like, oh my God. 
there are so many opportunities here. And when the light bulb clicked, aha moment. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Then I decided, okay, now this is an idea worth walking away from yeah. my career to go and pursue this. Because okay. you know, it takes, it takes you're taking risk, personal risk, right. financial, personal risk. Right. So tell me about those risks. What risk did you see right in front of you, and did you feel did you have any fears? Oh yeah, um, uh, I don't think any entrepreneur would say that uh, they're fearless. I think <laughs> everybody, and it's natural to be um, uh, worried. Um, I'd say two things come to mind. Uh, I would say current income and earning potential. So when I left, um, it was a very high income bracket, and to walk away from that oh, wow. into a who knows how this business would happen, you know, how much Unknown. I would make, et cetera, how long would it would take, et cetera. That was a, um, a huge fear of mine. Um, and then the second fear is related, but a little bit different, earning potential. Every single day, every hour I'm working on an entrepreneurial thing, I'm giving up. The, my opportunity cost is my earning potential. Where would I, what would I be making that year it had I continued in my career, et cetera. Right. So it's all about, for me, it's all about the financial risk, mm -hmm. personal risk of going on, on your own. So how did you overcome those, you know, fears that you were feeling at that time? I, I think a lot of uh, support from uh, family and friends. Um, I don't think I've personally overcome it. Uh, I think, uh, well, now now I feel, you know, I'm, I'm glad I made the decision. But for the first at least two or three years, I mean, there was definitely a constant stress. Mm -hmm. um, so until you get to the point where you transition from a startup to, hey, you know what, this is going to work. And I'm going to make a, a career and a life out of this thing. Yeah. Until that point, it was a constant fear. And if it wasn't for, you know, family and friends, I don't think I could have done it. So you do need that support mechanism around you. Yeah. And for everybody listening, I mean, they, they need to know that, that, you know, we all, and I constantly, everybody that I interviewed, I mean, by now we've I've interviewed about 10 people and they all say the same thing. I mean, as long as you have that support mechanism around you, that they all have fears and, you know, you need to make sure that you have resources, that you have the tools, that you have the people around you, that you surround yourself um, because you will feel those fears. And yeah. for as long as you keep going, you keep fighting, you keep believing in your dreams, you'll get through it. Um, and that is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. said. Yeah. Well, but thank you for sharing that. Sure. So what is the vibe that you want to portray to your customers um, from your company? Um, what would you say is your, your brand vibe? So uh, le I, let me answer that in two different ways. Sure. So first of all, I'll tell you about our core values. And then I'll tell you about the key benefits that we provide the customers. Perfect. Okay. The foundation upon everything is our core values. And these aren't just, oh, let's create some core values and call it a day. I put a tremendous amount of thought behind these. So number one is innovation. I did not want to do just another cookie cutter operation. I wanted to actually disrupt an industry. So that was our number one core value. Then the other four are kind of related to how would I want a business to treat me if I was a customer? Well, I would want um, excellence. So if I'm hiring a company, I want them to do an excellent job. I would want efficiency, um, you know, speed of operations. I would want to make sure that um, they're a company that has a lot of integrity. So that's another uh, one of our core values. And also professionalism. I want a company to treat me with respect when, I, when I'm working with them. So I thought of the core values uh, from a customer perspective and from my own perspective as a customer every day in multiple scenarios. And so those core values then, if you take those as like the foundation, then taking the number one core value innovation, I'm thinking, okay, well, within commercial real estate, how do we disrupt How do we do something completely different? And that leads us to it leads me to the seven key benefits. So when when you purchase real securities from us, which are really shares mm -hmm. of, of, of stock in, in, in different buildings, um, you're getting seven uh, key uh, benefits, benefits from it. The first uh, benefit that you're getting is you're getting to invest specifically in a building of your choice. Unlike a REIT, a real estate investment trust, which is a way that a lot of people invest, um, whether they know it or not, their financial advisors are probably purchasing REITs. And those REITs, you're not able to pick uh, specific buildings. They're like a portfolio of different commercial uh, mm -hmm. properties. So that's one, you get to pick the building. The second thing is, I wanted to open up the industry. I don't want, you know, if I was an investor, I would want to be able to invest in a large building. For up until now, it's been shut out to almost everybody, unless you're extremely wealthy mm -hmm. or you're an institutional investor, you're not able to invest in a large building. 
So our second uh, benefit is that you give investor access to these large buildings. Then our third and fourth uh, key benefits are that you are, are actually these securities, same with stock, you're getting capital gains and you're getting dividend payouts. And those dividend payouts come from the income produced by the assets, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, if a customer is trying to uh, invest in a, in a building, nobody has the time to sit there and property manage the building. So we prov provide professional property management for those buildings. And then the last two key benefits is if I have invested in a building, I would want to sell that right away, that investment when I'm ready to do so. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to pay some broker 6% uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, of, of, of my profits basically to right. be able to sell the building. So, yeah. so we basically, uh, through the securities, it's a liquid asset and it's commission for you to sell. So all seven things I would want in a, if I was an investor is what we've created for the customer. And by the way, it didn't exist until we did this. Mm -hmm. What have you learned in this amount of time that you are willing to share with them and let them know, you know, if I could do something differently, what, what would that be? Um, so one huge mistake I made uh, was bringing on people uh, early in the process and even midway through the process. Uh, and here's why it's a mistake. Uh, the companies, when I was working uh, before I went the entrepreneur route, the companies were very high performing companies. Um, the, the type of caliber of people there, high income, very educated, very uh, had a strong skill set. When you leave and you decide to do something on your own, you may be, like in my case, the only person that comes from that kind of background. And so then when you try to bring other people on board your team, these aren't the brightest bulbs, <laughs> right? And so it was excruciatingly frustrating uh, trying to train somebody to get them up to speed on anything because these aren't, like I said, the brightest of the bunch. Mm -hmm. Now, the way I corrected this this year is now what I do is I bring on vendors and contractors. Okay. So instead of bringing on teammates as an employee status, et cetera, or a partnership level, mm -hmm. um, I will actually hire somebody who is already an expert, for example, marketing. Mm -hmm. If I have a marketing need, I may be calling you, right? And, and because you're an expert in the field, et cetera. And then this way, when, when, when I work with a vendor, I know I can cherry pick the right vendor mm -hmm. or the right contract or whatever term you want to use. Mm -hmm. And I can make sure that our contract has performance management mechanisms in place to make sure that you provide the services mm -hmm. that I expect to, to get. So we're getting here towards the end of the show. Sure. And I want to give you the opportunity to actually talk to the audience here, actually talk to the mic like they are, you know, a whole room full of entrepreneurs. And if you could do that, what would you say? I would tell you that it is going to be 10, 20, 50 times harder than anything you've ever done. And I would tell you, it's going to sound weird, but being an entrepreneur is the most stressful and difficult thing I've ever had to do uh, beyond anything even through military service. Um, so prepare yourself because it's, it's a lot of work and it's going to consume you. I, I just do not see how I could ma manage being a good husband and being a good father and being an entrepreneur at the same time. People have done it. My hat is off to them. That's incredible. But uh, I just don't see how there's enough time in the day for that. So get going soon. <laughs> Thank and expect you. expect a lot of hard work. Yes, thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming to the thank show. You. It was an honor to have you here. It was here. an honor to be here. Yes. Thank you so much. And how can the audience find you? Oh, um, arevco.com or you could look me up on LinkedIn, uh, Ben Sharma, S-H-A-R-M-A. Thank you very much, Ben, for coming to the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.